We are at the Emerald Resort and Spa here in the Maldives. We've had an amazing five day stay here and we can't wait to tell you all about the rooms, service, and everything you need to know before you book. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Max. I'm Marin. We're Voyager Group. We post weekly videos with travel tips, hotel reviews, and videos from some of our favorite destinations around the world. So if you don't already, consider subscribing. And of course, if you like this video and you find the content useful, be sure to give us a thumbs up. It really helps our videos get more exposure and produce more videos just like this. All right, so let's jump right into our review. Our first category is location. Location, we rate four and a half stars. We're about 50 minutes seaplane from Malé, the capital city where you're going to fly in. We're located here in Ra Atoll, which is a beautiful atoll famous for a number of hotels in this area and truly exceptional marine life. And this island has a beautiful drop off on one side, incredible reef, and a really beautiful lagoon. However, it is worth noting, while this island is a natural island, it has been reinforced significantly. They have built barriers to keep out the strong swells and to create a better lagoon for the hotel. But for that reason, the island is a little less picturesque, particularly on certain sides. There are some surrounding islands that you can see from a distance. However, there is one island that is very close to the marina. So some of the rooms will have a view of that local island. Otherwise, this island is a beautiful island. It is what you expect from Maldives, beautiful white sand, picturesque blue water, and a lot of marine life that you can snorkel right off the house reef and find a lot of really interesting and cool things. We'll talk about it more in facilities, but if you are a diver, there's also a number of amazing dive locations that are within 10 to 20 minutes of this area where you can still see the resort from your dive site and the proximity is really amazing. Our second category is lobby and check-in. Lobby and check-in, we rate four and a half stars. We did have a unique experience in that we were coming from another resort that was just a 15 minute flight away. Once you arrive on property, you're greeted with drums and music, as well as a glass of champagne and picked up by your butler. During this COVID time, you are taken straight to an antigen test before you go to your room. So while you wait the results, which only take about 10, 15 minutes, you're toured around the island and taken to your room for check-in. Now, while we did have an incredible experience with our transfer and it was so short and convenient, we did want to make sure that we got the full picture. So we talked to other guests about their transfers. To give you an idea of what happens in Malé, you are picked up by a shared bus. You're taken to a shared lounge for Trans Maldives which is a nice lounge. We've been in it before, but it is not a private lounge. The last thing to expect, if you are traveling to this part of Ra Atoll, it is a little bit further north. For that reason, you are passing over quite a number of resorts. And because most seaplane transfers are shared transfers, there is a chance that you do stop at other resorts on the way, which could extend the length of your overall transfer from that 45 minute mark to an hour plus. One thing I'll also say about the arrival that's really great is the seaplane is able to pull up directly to their dock in their marina. And that does make for a much nicer arrival experience than being left on a dock that's a little further out, particularly if the weather isn't this calm. Our third category is rooms. Rooms were made four stars. The rooms here are massive and all of the rooms are pretty much the exact same, whether you're in the entry level beach villa all the way up to the presidential suite. The bathroom and the main bedroom are huge. They're actually both the identical size and then all of them have a patio or a balcony that extends the entire length of the room. The bathroom is covered in marble with a beautiful big mirror, a gorgeous shower, and a big tub. We had the opportunity to tour bunch of the different room types here on property. And we actually put together a video of room tours for Emerald, which you can check out linked right up here in the top corner. The bath amenities in the room are extremely high end using Lokiton toiletries, as well as the amenity kits that they have in the room. There's also unlimited water, sparkling or otherwise in the room and an incredible mini bar. The mini bar comes fully stocked. Everything in the mini bar is included with refill once a day, including Demi bottles of wine and beer. A question we're always asked is what's better beach villa or over water villa. And here it really comes down to what you're looking for. As we mentioned, every floor plan is pretty much the same. The differences really are going to be around the outside of the room, as well as in superior and presidential suites. You're gonna have a jetted tub versus a standard tub. The beach villas are beautiful. They are extremely private. And in general, the rooms are very private. So it just comes down to whether you want to be on top of the water or right next to it. The lighting in this room, as you can see behind us, is also really nice. They have some nice accent lighting. They do have master switches next to the bed. However, not all the lights are actually connected to those master switches, which did make it a little bit complicated. And it would be nice to see them have like USB ports next to the bed automatically included as well. From the overwater villas, you do have a ladder down to the beautiful water. So whether or not you have a pool or don't have a pool, you do have access to that beautiful blue lagoon. And of course, on the beach side, you are gonna be able to walk down into the beautiful blue water from there as well. Our room outside has a hammock with comfortable bean bags, which I thought was a nice touch. Yeah. Sometimes those hammocks can be a little bit uncomfortable, but with the bean bags, you can just kind of lie on them. The pools are also really nice size. They're not just like a plunge pool. They're actually kind of spacious, so you can relax and hang out in the pool. Overall, I was actually really impressed with how big these rooms
rooms actually are, and they were significantly bigger than I thought they were initially looking online. It's also worth noting they do turn down service here, so twice a day you have in-room service, where they come and refresh the towels and get you anything you need, like new Nespresso pods or bath amenities, so that's a really nice touch. Our fourth category is service. Service we rate four stars. It's worth mentioning that the staff here are genuinely incredible people. They really, really, really want to do their best to make you as happy as possible. Now, while there is an amazing eagerness to please, there is a lack of traditional training and refinement, but what they lack in refinement, they do certainly make up for in effort. And we've seen this happen multiple times, and you'll see it on TripAdvisor reviews that they really do go out of their way, particularly if you're celebrating a special occasion like a birthday or an anniversary or a honeymoon. We've heard of guests getting their baths filled with rose petals and bubbles. And even last night on our last night, they made us this beautiful romantic dinner setting. It was just a really thoughtful effort and they were so happy to do it. One of our biggest pet peeves is being asked at every meal if you have any dietary restrictions and what your room number is. And particularly when the hotel's not at full occupancy, that always drives us crazy. But here, not one time do they ask us after the first initial day if we had any dietary restrictions and everybody remembered what villa we were in. Every villa, regardless of the room type, does get a butler service. They are not dedicated to your villa only, so they do cover a lot of rooms. Our butler, Sajid, was amazing. He was always available. Even on his day off, he was coordinating our PCR tests and making sure that our lunch reservations were set up at the right time. And that was really, really amazing. We have heard some inconsistencies from other guests around their butler not remembering who they were compared to some other guests, as well as getting some itineraries mixed up. So there's definitely room for improvement there. It is worth noting that you should always ask for what you need and what you want. They are available by WhatsApp and you can also call the front desk. So be sure to contact them with anything you need because it might not always be given to you without asking. Another thing to mention in service is that they do have an amazing app here on property. The app allows you to plan an itinerary, book things. You have all of your reservations for restaurants that you can do directly in the app. Your butler can also control the itinerary that shows up in your app. So when they book things for you, whether it's excursions, diving, snorkeling, spa treatments, whatever it is, it's going to show up in your app. And from your app, you can even cancel, move, change things very easily, which makes for a really phenomenal guest experience. And we've been to a lot of all-inclusive properties, especially in the Maldives, where reservations are required at the restaurants. And that's also the case here. But before we showed up, Sajid had already scheduled all of our dinners and lunches on property. He wanted to make sure that we had nothing to stress about when we showed up. And that goes a really long way. One thing about this island is it is a new property and a lot of the staff are fairly new. And some of the staff does appear to be a little bit overwhelmed, particularly on the butler side. We are in pretty low occupancy right now. I would be curious to see how they handle higher occupancy because it does seem like some things might fall through the cracks, particularly with the level of training. Another phenomenal part of the service here has been the food and dining staff, and in particular, the sommeliers, which brings us to our fifth category, dining. Dining rate four stars. To be honest, the food was fairly inconsistent, but the beverage program alone is a five-star experience, which bumped up our rating. The beverage experience here is phenomenal, and if you are a wine enthusiast, they have 92 different wines that you can select from, from various different varietals that are all included in your package, which is an amazing aspect of this beverage program. They actually have a total of five sommeliers here on property. Sommeliers like Erica, who was one of our favorite people here on property, who just went above and beyond to be able to provide recommendations about the wine, what wine pairings would go well with certain food. And it really made you feel as though you were about to pay for that bottle. In fact, on our first night here, we were a little <laughs> unsure. We were like, wait a second, we just asked for wine. Is she, does she know that we're not gonna pay for this bottle? But that's really just the experience here. You, Even though it's all inclusive, you get that experience of ordering a bottle of wine, having that bottle of wine brought to your table, sitting there at the table side, and it really ups the level of service and culinary experience in general to have that. And of course, they have a huge selection of liquors and spirits as well, pages and pages. So if you're a whiskey enthusiast or a gin enthusiast, they had tons of different things available as well as some great specialty cocktails. While there are several a la carte options on property, the main outlet is Aqua. It is the all day dining option open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. There are no other breakfast options on property and on certain days, some of the other outlets are closed. And so Aqua is actually the only lunch option as well. We found the food to be somewhat inconsistent. The Indian in Sri Lankan, Maldivian options, anything that's Southeast Asian or Indian from those local areas was fabulous. But we did find that some of the more traditional buffet options, there wasn't anything that particularly wowed us at the buffet with the exception of the Indian food, which we had for breakfast. The a la carte options are nice. The grill is open for lunch on most days, which is our personal favorite because your toes in the sand. They have an amazing pizza as well as a very good caprese salad. And it has a really extensive menu. And then of course your a la carte dining options for dinner, Le Asiatique and Avzanico were 
both great options. I really enjoyed basically eating sushi the entire <laughs> night at Lo Asiatique. We didn't have a chance to try the teppanyaki, but we saw people over there having fun. The teppanyaki chef was very skilled, throwing eggs and catching chickens with something like that. <laughs> it was really great, particularly if you have kids. And then of course, Amazonico, I think was overall the best food here on property. One thing to note is that Amazonico is not open all night. So do check beforehand which night it's gonna be open because if you are interested in that in particular, you need to make sure to get the reservations on those nights, particularly as occupancy starts to go up. The last thing we'll mention in food and beverage is the in-room dining. They do offer it, however, it is at a pretty steep upcharge. Breakfast is a $60 charge, as well as dinner is an $80 charge. So that does make for pretty expensive breakfast, lunch, or dinner at an all-inclusive. If you've watched our video about all-inclusive meal plans, you'll know that there are sometimes a lot of asterisks and add-ons and other things like that. This property actually doesn't have a large number of add-ons on the menu. They do have some at certain outlets that are add-ons for premium steaks, lobster, and other experiences like that. In general with the food, I think that presentation is something that they could improve, as well as leaning into some more flavorful dishes, which I think they've really captured with some of the more traditional Indian and Maldivian dishes, but I think they've kind of left behind with some of the more grilled dishes, which tend to be a little bit more on the simple preparation side and make for kind of an uninspired meal. But what we will say about dining is the staff for dining has been above and beyond amazing. If there was anything that you didn't like, it was very easy to engage with them and get something remade. They were so eager to recommend things. And honestly, the things that they recommended were often the best things on the menu. So rather than guessing, we often relied on them to pick the best things on the menu for us, like Benny, who made us an amazing Indian breakfast. Our sixth category is facilities. Facilities are a four and a half stars. In general, they check all of the boxes for what you need out of a resort in the Maldives. They're just missing some of the flair. We had an amazing spa experience. One of the best massages I've had since we've been here in the Maldives. I had the Thai Shiatsu massage, which I can highly recommend. It was fabulous and our masseuses were incredible. We also used the relaxation area after. I think that leaves a little bit to be desired. They do have a steam sauna and a big area where you can relax as well as a hot tub, but I do feel like it was a little bit on the smaller side. And again, as occupancy gets pushed here, and more people are booking massages, I do think that that's gonna push the constraints of that space. I will say the spa, as well as all their facilities, are extremely reasonably priced. Massages are in the 100 to 20 to $150 range. And then when you look at the activities like snorkeling, excursions, as well as the diving, things are very reasonably priced. And all guests get access to a free excursion if you stay a certain number of nights, which is a really nice addition to the property. You have three options for free excursions. You can take out a sunset cruise, a Donny fishing cruise, or you can go on a dolphin cruise. We chose the Donny fishing, which was actually so much fun. We actually both caught fish, which was amazing. Yeah. Marin's first fish was huge, but really skinny. <laughs> <laughs> All the fish were released. We didn't actually catch anything big enough to eat, but if you were to catch something big, they would prepare it for you at the grill, which is something that's really cool if that is an excursion that you're interested in. And we also get to do an amazing free excursion as well, which was free to all guests. Well, we actually got to go do a trash cleanup on one of the local sandbanks here. We got to snorkel and look for trash, which was actually really just snorkeling, which was amazing. We looked at fish, we took photos, and then we did actually find some amazing trash. We found an anchor that we got to pull up, this big crustacean-y looking anchor. We found a bunch of metal pieces, and we were on the trip with a family who found a bunch of stuff, and they were super excited about the experience, the ability to clean up, but also have this excursion where they could spend time as a family going out and doing this. We spent some time on the sandbar. We found things like nets. We got to get in there with our knives and <laughs> cut them. It was really, it was really kind of a fun experience, and it made you feel really good about spending the day out there and cleaning up, and we were really excited to do it. The diving here is also incredible. The prices are tiered as well, so the more dives you do, the less it costs, and it, they have amazing dive sites within 10 to 15 minutes of here that you're not even looking to go 40, 45 minutes away like at a lot of resorts. Yeah, we had an amazing dive on a dive site called the Labyrinth, where we just went through all kinds of different canyons and small spaces and overhangs, and there were so many fish that you could barely see in front of you. It was such an incredible dive. It's a great place to dive. It's a great place to get certified. And like we mentioned, the prices are actually really reasonable when you compare them to other resorts here in the Maldives. It's also worth saying that the dive stuff is incredible. We did not book a private tour and typically hotels will cancel your trip if there aren't enough people on it. However, we were able to go out just the two of us with the guide and the full crew on the boat. And that was a really nice experience. They also have a great gym as well as a number of different courts. There's tennis courts, paddle courts, and a convertible court that they can turn into a soccer field or some other things, which is really 
really, really cool. There is so much to do here. The Water Sports Center also has inclusions for non-motorized activities. You can take out paddle boards, kayaks, and of course you can take out jet skis. They even have a two hour jet ski adventure where you can go to surrounding sand banks and explore with a guided tour. Our seventh and final category, style. Style array four stars. In general, the style here are super consistent and they use a lot of very cool features like bamboo in everything, including the room key cards. I thought it was really cool and a great emphasis on their sustainability. The way they built all of these buildings is actually cement structures. They would look really modern if it weren't for the bamboo roofs. They've added these bamboo roofs that are actually overhangs on top of all of the different buildings. They're actually not incorporated into the actual building. So they're more just covering the open spaces that are outdoors or in the case of the villas, they're actually covering the tops of the villas. They make for a much more authentic Maldivian look, even though the room style is actually pretty modern when it comes to the construction. The style is extremely consistent, almost too consistent in all the rooms. The same art is going to be in every single room that you're in, even the presidential suite. There are paintings of Nemo and local fish that you find in the Maldives, all over the walls, in the rooms. And I would say the style is a little bit on the eclectic side. Well, there are some great angles in the rooms where you have a really nice combination of lighting, wood accents, paintings. There are some walls that are a little bit bare. And in general, across the property, I felt like it was a little bit cookie cutter with the way that they kind of repeated the exact same thing from area to area. It would have been nice to see a little bit more variation in the art across property. And it does appear that on certain style aspects, they cut corners a little bit, and it would have been nice to see a little bit higher level of material is used. However, that emphasis that they do have on combining the modern and the more rustic style of Maldivian huts together, I think they really executed that well. And it's so cool to see all the bamboo structures that they've built here on property. Overall, we rate this property 4.2 stars. This is a great hotel if you're looking for an all-inclusive experience with an amazing wine selection. The rooms are large, spacious, the staff is incredibly kind. They really do cater to everyone, whether you're here with a family or on a honeymoon. There are so many things you can do on property to celebrate that special occasion or just have an amazing vacation. Finally, our hopefully temporary COVID safety rating. The COVID safety rating does not count towards the hotel's overall rating. And at this property, we rate COVID safety four and a half stars. In general, the COVID safety precautions are amazing here. There's hand sanitizer stations quite literally everywhere, including a pop-up cocktail party with the management. They had a very nice hand sanitizer station. It was very cute. They do also do antigen testing on arrival here, which is really nice for peace of mind. That being said, there are some inconsistencies there in terms of the COVID test that kind of goes back to service. We did hear of a guest that did not have an antigen test on arrival, even though they were expecting it. They just never got it. And I think that goes back to maybe the butlers having a lot of rooms that they're catering to and mixing up some itineraries. All the staff on property also wear masks at all times, which even though everybody has an antigen test and they do antigen testing for the staff as well, I think it is really nice that they're taking that step to make guests feel comfortable. They actually take your temperature when you go into every restaurant as well. And in the buffet, you don't serve yourself. They do have barriers and the person on the other side actually puts together a plate based on what you ask for and serves it to you. So they have taken a lot of really great COVID precautions, including even giving you your own mask in your room should you choose to wear them. They're branded masks that say Emerald. And of all the hotels that we have stayed at during COVID, <laughs> which is a lot of hotels, That's nobody's so done that. <laughs> yeah, and it, I'm like, I keep, like everybody always has branded masks from all these hotels. Yeah. And I'm like, I want a branded mask. I mean, you have to yeah. wear one anyway when you get home, when you take a flight, when you do all these things. So I think it's really cool that they actually give guests those same masks. I think it was a really nice touch. The last thing to say is around PCR testing on departure. Most countries or transit are still requiring PCR PCR tests. They do this on property 48 hours before you leave. It's super easy. It is $120 a person, but it does get you the peace of mind and the ease that you need to fly home. One thing to keep in mind is that if you are flying to the Maldives, it is very likely that you're flying one of the airlines like Etihad, Emirates, or Qatar. Most of those airlines, regardless of your final destination, are going to require you to have a PCR test because you are going to be flying through Dubai or Doha. So it is really important to note that if you are coming from the US, for instance, currently all you're required to enter is an antigen test, you are still gonna need a PCR test to get on that flight. And so it is really important to know that you do have that option and they do offer it here on property. So if you like this video, be sure to give us a thumbs up. And of course, if you don't already, make sure to hit that subscribe. We have tons of hotels that we visited while we were here in the Maldives. We have lots more videos coming out. And of course, check out the room tour for this, which we've linked right up here in the top corner. And be sure to check out photos and video from our trip on our Instagram at Voyager Guru and daily tips and behind the scenes on TikTok at Voyager Guru. If you are booking a trip, to the Maldives, make sure to go check out our destination page at BorgiaGrew.com where we have a full Maldives destination guide, including all the hotels we've stayed at, travel tips, and a big gallery of photos from here in the Maldives. 
And as always, I'm Marin. And I'm Max. Our Voyager Guru. See you out there.